uh, less discourse required frameworks uh, necessary to reduce the influx of substandard products in the country. Joining me live in our Lagos studio is the Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, popularly called SON, uh, Mr. Farouk Salami. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate your time. Uh, first, uh, let's start with uh, issues around standardization for uh, like 50 years after inception of SON. Is the country where it should be? That would be disingenuous if I say we are where we should be. Hmm. But we, are, we should be, we are heading towards where we should be. Hmm. That's the... so, what is the major impediment? What is, what, is, what is not making us move as expected at that speed? Well, um, we have a growing population. We have uh, massive issues with people bringing in substandard products into the country. We have uh, poor infrastructure in the country that you know, the government is working hard to improve. So it's a, lot of, it's a gamut of a lot of things that are uh, you know, causing the issues. Mm. Hey, let's now look at check meeting all of this uh, illicit uh, you know, importation and activities into the country. Aside from the seizures we see, and destruction that we see sometimes when necessary. What other initiatives are taken by the standards agency to mitigate all of this? Well, uh, over the years, what we do is that uh, to, um, uh, we, 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 we stop the import of those. We control the possibility of bad things coming in. Yes. And then the things we just added to the whole thing is uh, reaching out to associations uh, but one of the good things is our, our Nigerians are very organized. The import uh, individuals have organizations they belong to. The marketing individuals in the markets have, have organizations mm -hmm. they belong to. So we figured one of the best things to do is to reach out to their organization and then sensitize the leadership. And the leadership will reach out to the individuals because the bottom line is if somebody is in trouble, they go to their leadership to get them out. Mm -hmm. So now, if the leadership is aware what the problem is, then it's easier to, um, to uh, prevent it from happening. I'll give you a simple example. Okay. Um, a couple of weeks in Potakot, we had uh, issues with used tires that we confiscated. Yes, I saw that report. Yes, and um, you guys did a good job of actually reporting it. So um, what we did was we reached out to the leadership of that particular market. Okay. And then the individuals came. Um, and because of their presence, we explained to the person in buying, uh, bringing those into the country, how, why it is illegal to bring them in, why the standards have been compromised, and why no matter what we want to do as a compromise, we have to destroy those items. And the leadership understood very well, and they convinced the individual to let go without going to court. So that helped us in so many ways. Now the leadership knows what a bad situation is, and now they, are, they, they make it easier for us without going to court and spending money in litigation. So it's a, it's a very workable situation because my belief personally as an individual is people don't go out of their way just to harm people. Mm -hmm. People go out of their way to either make money, money or to save money or you know, the, the, the person important wants to make sure he saved that container. Instead of four containers, he wants to get, just pay for one container. The individual buying in the market wants to save money and get the least expensive tire to use. So in the process, we have victims in so many uh, situations. Okay. And uh, it will help if we continue the, the sensitization and making people realize what it is that they are doing wrong and why it is wrong. I would be interested because I see many times you meet with like the Aspanda people, the Alaba, the electrical people. Yes. I know all and all of these people, how receptive have they been with all your policies, trying to advise them to do what is right? Are they really taking Honestly, uh, this Honestly, 100% is they're very receptive. Um, but I've been here four months. Sometimes, you know, people say the right things. So, but so far the actions like in Aspanda that you mentioned, yeah. uh, four or five weeks ago, we had a sting operation on lubricants. Yes. These individuals, you see the, the, the sad situation, let me back up a little bit. The sad okay. situation in the country is our local manufacturers have this bad uh, catch-22 situation. When you make excellent quality goods, you spend a lot of money doing it, pay people well to do it, then somebody will come and fake those products. 
You know, like our wires, Nigerian wires are known to be the best in the country now. So now people are going to, to whatever countries they go to um, import wires and then put made in Nigeria on them. So, it's, it's, it's a, so the, the, the lubricant issue is the same thing. We have a local manufacturer here in Nigeria, in Kano specifically, where we need all the work we can get because of these you know, issues of social issues. And the guy's products were so good, people were exporting it to Middle Eastern countries. But then suddenly, because of their popularity, now these individuals started actually faking those products, either bringing it from overseas, fake, or actually faking it in Nigeria and trying to export it. So this Aspanda issue, we had to list with the market association in Aspanda, and they actually helped us because a lot of the situations we are having is some of these markets, if you don't have cooperation from their association, yeah. even if you have a battalion of police, you will not be able to get in. True. You know, unless you want a bloody fight, which honestly I don't think is necessary to, for us to do True. that. I, I agree with you. So, yeah. yeah. So we had the success with Aspanda because of the cooperation with the organization. Good. So, so that's, that is, that, that, that's really key then. There's something that is always also always on the news and people talk about it. It's about returning to the ports. Uh, SON will, many believe SON will make more impact yeah. if you are in that premises. How does this come to you, DJ? Well, let me explain a little bit for you too. The sad part is by law. Our law that was established you know, 50 years ago and then upgraded every year the last upgrade was 2015. Mm -hmm. Section 7, subsection 30, 1B says specifically that we need to be at the port. And uh, unfortunately, several years back with the previous government, the former minister who, uh, for finance, who was the head of the economic team, in her own wisdom decided that she wanted to have ease of doing business and uh, we were kicked out of it. And then, uh, of course, two years later, NAVDAC was brought back in. We haven't been brought back in, unfortunately, even though we check the majority of the products yeah. in the country. So to answer your question, we, we are working very hard with the authorities to return to the ports for the meantime. Why I say for the meantime? Because the ultimate plan for the government, which I agree with, is to have screeners mm -hmm. into the ports, where all the, all the containers come into the country, we can sit in our comforts, and just scan them and see which ones look interesting, then we you know, physically check them. But before we get to that stage, uh, we, we need to go back to the ports because 85% of the products coming into this country uh, come through Lagos. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the customs are not trained to look for standards. They are trained to look at contrabands, yeah. maybe, you know, value a, pro a, a thing so they can charge True. duties. True. So even if they want to, they don't have the ability to do that. So it does NAVDAC. NAVDAC has a purview to regulate drugs and uh, food. And uh, they don't have the ability to look at iron rod or uh, a tire or something and say, hey, this is substandard. Mm -hmm. So we, there is no reason why we should be out of the port, but we need to go back to make sure this happens. Because I will give you another big issue with us not being in the port. My organization has a very well-trained workforce, yes. mostly engineers. Now, what we are doing right now is because we can't go into the ports, we have to either follow the goods as they leave or we have to go to the warehouses. Now, these are young people who are graduated maybe a few, five years ago or three years ago. Now, you want them to enforce. So they go to a warehouse where there are a thousand other individuals who have interest in their warehouse. We may have 10, 20 police officers with us. And these guys are at risk. We have been attacked several times. Some of these people's, I mean, they are brothers, children, yeah. other people's children, they're yeah. at risk yeah. for, you know, which we can minimize that essentially by just checking at the port of entry. Now, the issue, which was a valid issue at that time, was the efficiency of checking. Now, we have changed a lot of things from that period to now. Now we have more efficient way of looking at the, the products. We have more efficient way of moving the products. We have a whole warehouse, which is like less than five minutes from the port. Mm -hmm. So if we have a problem with the container, all we have to do is just move that container out of the port to that area. If we finish our inspection and check-in, they go. So the, the port, no congestion in the port. So yeah, we, we are working very hard to see that we go back 
Uh, We've had importers and business people come to say, like you mentioned, the ease of doing business things, say that it's been impeded one way or the other. Now, I'm thinking, aside maybe destroying some of this, because I, I saw those tires, you know, and yeah. uh, is there any other thing that can be done to some of these products aside that? Products, there are certain categories of products. Good. There are some products that there's nothing you can do. You have to destroy, just them. To destroy them. When you import a used tire, from the moment you went out to import those mm -hmm. tires, you know they're illegal. Why are they illegal? Because in the countries you're buying them, they were wise enough to see their expiration is yeah. four years old or whatever. And then they said, okay, we've got to put it in our dumpster. Now, our people will go to the dumpster and get it. <laughs> so now anything you go to the dumpster to get, you, you know most likely, unless you are lucky, somebody threw a diamond ring in the ring in the trash, you know you are grabbing trash. And trash will only produce trash. So these used tires essentially are not only contraband, but they are too dangerous. There's no way we can ascertain their standards on an individual basis. So those ones, the government wisely decided to ban them. So if I have those in my custody, I have to destroy them. Now, on the other hand, there are some products that somebody forgot to put a, oh, deliberately did not put a stamp on it. Mm. You know, like oh, you, you bring your iron road, and it doesn't have a stamp of the person who makes it. Now, some of those things that can be fixed will allow people to fix it. If it's a labeling issue, for example, you buy something and all that you need to do is have a proper name on it or proper expiration on it or something. Yeah. We can fix that. So there are fixable things, then there are things that... I'll give you a simple example that okay. I told my marketing people. You walk into your house, you saw your son with a bag of marijuana. There's no way you can fix that problem. You have to seize that marijuana <laughs> yeah, and make sure he doesn't use it again, right? But now, on the other hand, if the person is sipping a bottle of milk from the fridge, you tell him, don't do this again, wipe the top of the bottle, and make sure Sealed. Madam doesn't see that boy doing it again, and you put it back in the fridge for use. So integrity is not uh, uh, compromised. When integrity of a product is not compromised, all we need is to fix it. We can fix it. But when it's a totally wrong issue. There is no compromise with that. Hmm. Uh, before I go to my, my next question, something came to my mind, talking about certification. Yes. Because I know you also certify uh, goods and all of that. What's the process? And uh, how easy is it for importers? I might one day uh, leave journalism. I want to become a producer. Or <laughs> you well, know? The, we have two types of certification. OK. We have the local certification, which is MANCAP. That one is something you manufacture. When you, what you manufacture here in Nigeria, we go to your factory, we look at your factory, we look at how you take care of your employees, how you keep the environment, the product, the integrity of the product is tested in our labs. We have a very beautiful, up to standard, world class lab in Oba, which is, you know, tests almost everything you can think of under the sun. So that one is the man cup. So that's domestically manufactured product can be verified. Now, sun cup is the other one where if you are importing, Say you want to import your earpiece for your, your business. And uh, what you do is you, you go to the manufacturer, the inspection company there uh, will, you know, will give you all the paperwork and everything. Then you provide the paperwork here in Nigeria with us. I'm buying this from this company, okay. and this company is genuine. Then we give you certification, okay. saying, OK, bring it in. Okay. Now, what will, what will happen is that certificate, you use it to go to the bank to get money if you are using the bank to get money, and then you bring your product in. Now, what will happen is, in the process, somewhere in between, we have to show that product you said you are bringing in, which we certify that it's OK to be brought in, is the same product you have in the container, which in most cases, a very high percentage of cases, products will give authorization for products to be brought in, and then what is in the container is totally different, different. item. item. You know, we, we have situations where we give uh, permits for building materials and we have toothpicks and all that stuff brought in the container. And those things are already out of, it shouldn't be That's what I'm saying. Country. So Again. essentially, um, so this is what you're asking about the certification, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then we have another certificate where individuals that are manufacturing here in Nigeria need raw materials to be brought in so they can complete the manufacturing process here. That's a different certification. But that one is neither man cup or sun cup. It's, it's, it's called something different. Okay. And I, want, I don't want to call the name because I'm so new. I don't want. 
my people to chew my head. Thank you. But I know there is a product. Where Thank we you. Do Thank that. you so much for that clarity. I really wanted to understand that issue of certification. Information technology is currently driving the whole environment. Uh, you know, I'm now looking at Sun. How well are you trying to embrace IT, particularly at this time? We're talking about COVID-19, the new normal. Yes. We will embrace IT already because we are doing most of our meetings through Zoom. Um, uh, which actually most of the government agencies do. And um, we, um, IT is the backbone in everything we do, with or without COVID. Because essentially, if you're going to try to do certification, it's much easier for you in your own home yeah, to yeah. log on, apply, give the information needed, and then all you have to do is to get your receipt. So we are working on e-receipt, uh, uh, right now, which is almost finished, where individuals have no business coming to the headquarters. They can do everything from Onicha or from Kano, and they don't have to come to Abuja to, to get a physical thing. So you do all your work, you get your seat, you get processes done on, uh, online. So mm. we, we are working on it. It's a little bit expensive, but yeah, it is. it's worth it eventually. It's, it's worth it if you look at it. Okay, now, with about five months now, yes, like you said, into the job. Give, give us a... Four, right? Yes. Okay, four yeah, okay, four. Give us an assessment into uh, what's been happening, the ease of business, uh, ease of doing business agenda, and all of it talking about FFG's target on economic growth. How well are you keen in? What's your vision with all, in regards to all of well, this? Well, um, our vision essentially as an organization is to protect our industries in the country and to make sure we, we bring in appropriate stuff into the country and protect our people in this country from products that will be damaged to them or will cost them money. And then um, it's even more complicated now with this African free trade. Yeah, it so is, it, yeah. Uh, essentially, um, we are working with organizations. Those ones that we need to protect, we do our you know, research, we do our investigations, we do our enforcement to make sure their products are not faked. And then we are working with, uh, you know, individuals to make sure if they need help with a business, starting a business, what we can do to show them these are the standards. So we give them the standards and then we help them establish those standards in a, a facility they are trying to produce. So uh, we are working on it. We are working on so many items. You know, and most of the time people reach out for us to help them. We have the management systems that we teach. We have the, so yeah. It, 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 it really a lot of work, a lot of work. As we round off now, what, are, what more should we expect? What are your advice to importers, anybody that wants to get into business of bringing in goods and, and all of that as the man on the of affairs, the DG of SON? What's your message? Our view essentially is we don't, we, we are not going to encourage people to bring stuff into the country because of uh, the loss of income for the country, the loss of money, that we have millions of Nigerians looking for work, and uh, we want to encourage people to set up here in this country, mm. pay taxes here, employ our people here. The more people are employed, the less problems we will have with all these issues we are having in the country right now. But when a situation happens, no country uh, stays 100% without import. So we, we, we make sure that before they buy their product, we give them proper uh, certificate and proper information as to what products are acceptable in this country. If they reach out to us, we make sure we do that. But if they don't, we will reach out, we make sure we catch them in the ports and stop them from doing what they're doing. So essentially, we, we are here to help, but just like as any decent parent is, if somebody is erring, we take care of it. We make sure that people don't do that. So we, we prosecute, we enforce the rules, we confiscate products, we help you build your factory. We help you teach how to employ your employees. We, tell, we teach you how to manage your employees. We do a lot of things, and we're just here to help. That's it. Challenges, challenges. I just remember, the there must be challenges, particularly in implementation, enforcement of all of this. Tell us some challenges. You well, and your men, your team members. The challenges are there, just like everything in life. But essentially, what we are doing is, when we see a problem, we look for the solution. Mm. Most of my people, like I told you, are engineers. We, we, don't, we tinker. We make sure if there's a problem, we figure out a way how to solve those problems. And uh, we, we, we are doing pretty well. I mean, and I'm learning, too, in the process. So it's, uh, 
it's a good opportunity. Indeed, I like that. Thank you so much. It's really been nice having this chat with you, Director General, Chief Executive Officer of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, so when so Farouk Salim, I thank you so much. And we hope to have you again when you know activities bring us up to speed and let Nigerians know what's been happening again. How well our people are complying? Because I know Nigerians, they will comply. Well, actually, they are doing a lot of compl uh, complying. I mean, it's it's a pleasure, and um, I know a lot of people assume things. But most people, when you teach them why they are doing things wrong, they take it. So I, I really have, I'm very confident. I'm pumped up to get things done right. All right, then let's leave it on that very positive note. Thank you very much Thank you. for your time.